Hello and welcome back. So, what for broadcast is finally here. Full game. Uh, it's. Uh, I've been waiting this very long time to finally continue the game. It's. It's. It's so good. At least uh, before. I don't know how is this. Uh, update this, but. Wait. Let me story mode. Eight night what? The eight segment three. The people never happy. It never enough. Podcast. Action. Oh wait 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 what? Peloton? No, I finished that one. Lockdown. Let's see. So I have to choose longest one. We'll see. End of the era. I, oh, please. I cannot believe you, Ellen. A push response. Wait. Please don't tell me it didn't save Russia's proportional response segment one. Heat wave segment three. End of era, notice port. The weak war crazy. Are you saying that advance have cured death? <laughs> no, not this one. We're still vassal slave slaves, we're just in prettier cages. Twenties. <laughs> we're only getting star. Segment three. Proportion response. Yeah, this one. Segment three is the week four. I think this is the right one. Yeah, that's have to be. I think it's this one. This continues the game. game. I'm not 100% sure. Not 100% sure. Is it this one or no? Manageable debt. What? Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, but necessary, yeah. I think I ch chose... Uh, Advents, Advents, yeah, other side, not the media side, the resistance side. Don't remember what side I choose. I didn't check it there. Yeah. Final farewell. Huh? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, I give the passport passport away to my uh, friend or some somebody. Ooh, 400. End of era.
change in scenery. Okay, good to know. Ooh, pretty far three. Almost a year. I... Almost a year. Hmm, that's a pretty far. So somebody's people being kidnapped, looks like. Looks like people are being kidnapped. What? 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 Damn, that's a lot of days. Yeah, this is continue. I didn't get that far. What? I'm I, I'm still in debt? I don't make money? What? Hmm. Okay, some some something weird. Something weird is happening here. We're still in that. Okay. Destroy. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, like it. Ooh. Night of fire? Okay, what's happening here? All the crops are being burned, looks like. Come on, I want to play the game already. Come on, come on, come on. It's been like Ooh, three, oof, quite a lot of days, more than a year, almost. How you portray celibate, you influence the lives, really? Really? It wasn't before, it's, it's a new update, maybe that changes? Yeah, this is brand new, all of this. This is brand new. Uprising. Oh, yes, uprise. I like uprises. Year and a half, liberation night. Yeah. Alex? This is Alan James. The revolution starts tonight, Alex, and we need your help. Throughout this broadcast, we're going to ask you to do things that will directly help with this mass protest. I'll be talking to you regularly tonight, and I'll also be hacking in when I can. Please help get our message out. We're on the verge, Alex. You've always been fair and balanced in your approach to us. With your help, we can tip the balance in our favor. If you play our tape at the second break, that's when we think it will have the most impact. Second break, it's okay. Right. Episodes of Just the Job, followed at 10 p.m. by a chance to see the very last episode. Because I don't want to go on a date with uh, you. Universal, Colin. what have Let's you got share. to lose? My reputation. It's all right. No. Once you get past the teeth and a problematic tattoo, I am perfectly capable of messing up my own love life. Let's put that. this one. David wouldn't get off the phone. Oh, is David single? Christ's sake, Colin, stay out of it. I can help you. I'm an expert at romance. Ask my ex wives. Please don't set me up with your brother. That's 10 seconds, everybody. You're not as tight, babe. Too short. Too smart. Going in five, four, New Three. one. New anchor. Good evening. This is the National Nightly News broadcasting across the territories. My name is Megan Wolfe. Our top stories tonight. Ashes to ashes. It's been 40 days since Disrupt conducted attacks across the territories. The coordinated action, dubbed the Night of Fire by commentators, was seen as an attempt to subvert the supply chain, but there may have been more to it. 
While emergency services were all kept busy at the agricultural centres, it seems a series of covert attacks was carried out, including the freeing of political prisoners and, sources say, several assassination attempts. The Department of Betterment have declined to call Yeah, it's lots of changes food from last update. Food. With the last of the menu centres opening lots of in territories 5, massively. 8 and 14 today, Advance confirmed that the programme is now in full operation, providing free food for every citizen of the new future. What started as rationing during the 20-week war has blossomed into a social contract that is the envy of the unawakened world. Jack Tractor Pants, spokesman for the menu centres, said today that while they can guarantee the contents of every box is nutritious, the actual quality of the meals you cook depends on whether you have a touch of Chef Jordan Rankley or the culinary skills of a professional footballer. If I were a rich man, problems in territories 11, 17 and 22 today as striking bosses attempted to undermine their new economies. With seemingly no awareness of irony, the former CEOs and MDs have come together to form the Wealth Creators Union, with demands including a return to 150% bonuses, private jets and mandatory groveling zones. Advance have been quick to respond, saying if they would rather quit their cushy jobs to become nurses or teachers, they'll earn significantly more than they used to pay their own workforce. Thus far, no one has taken up the challenge. <coughs> Some fun now. Signs of ever more resistance to Advance's radical policies today, as popular resistance movement Disrupt extended their reach further across the territories. The organization's emblem appeared in every major city across the territories last night in a well-coordinated publicity stunt, which has seen them dominate the headlines. While it's beyond debate that Disrupt's membership is growing at a rapid pace, not everyone seems to be as energetic about it as spokesperson Alan James would have us believe. Especially not this resident of Grottingberg Zoo in Territory 6, who seems remarkably unenthused about global politics. And climaxes tonight for three stories we've been following. An iron fist in a velvet glove. Disaster at the High Court today as Rimington Fist mm -hmm. loses their court battle against local residents. Regular viewers will remember that after a cocktail of dangerous explosives was used to accelerate the Moobs project last year, three nature reserves, an ancient burial ground and the entire mm -hmm. town of Calamity fell into the resultant hole. CEO Sophia Rimington, seen here leaving the High Court after the judge's damning verdict, is expected to resign before the end of the day. I guess you could say a boss lady go boom boom. A disappointing ending to an explosive time for the youngest female CEO in history. Teleport tainted? In a surprising turn of events, the remaining scientists of Dante's taint mm -hmm. seem to have Same. vanished into thin air. After many months of silence, the rescue team finally reached the remote caves to find them completely deserted. This strange unknown piece of equipment was all that was found. Theories range from teleportation to time travel or just a half-finished hot tub. <coughs> Full time. The sporting world mourned the loss of a former hero today at the funeral of footballing star Johnny Hamsleeves. Dogged by controversy throughout his life, the troubled striker's behaviour became more and more erratic in recent years. His tragic and avoidable death at the age of just 29 will come as a blow to his literally tens of fans here? around the world. All that, plus we'll be taking a trip to oh. Dangley Parts for the notice board, as well as getting a sneak peek at the hottest ticket in town. That's all coming up on tonight's National Nightly News. of your houses block the track whoa, whoa, whoa. Hmm? but first 500 days fine leader and a great man the start of tonight's program is dedicated what to remembering that? and celebrating the life of Peter Clement. Patrick Bannon is live from Parliament Park, where Julia Salisbury will be breaking ground on what will soon be a memorial garden in Peter's honour. Patrick. Listening to that old bitch lying through her teeth about missing that poor uh, bastard. Patrick. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're live. Because I'm not being funny. Things were better with Peter, weren't they? Patrick. They were, and I don't mind saying it. They were, because he held her back. But now, now there's no stopping Hello, her. Hello, Patrick. We're live. Of course, can't say that, can I, Francis? 
Not, not with public ownership. No, with public I ownership, you can't say anything the these days. Oh, she's lost it, mate. She's completely off the rocker. I heard from an aide, but... Hello, <laughs> Megan, you join me here live from the what? Oh. <laughs> uh, uh... Seems like we've lost some signal there for a moment. <laughs> well, we will be going live to that groundbreaking ceremony just as soon as we can get Patrick back. <laughs> Meanwhile, let me just say, I think the memorial gardens are going to be gorgeous. I've had a sneak peek at the designs and Alana Marsh has done a fabulous job. Oh, okay, all right, it seems like we have got the signal back. We can now go live to Patrick Bannon in Parliament Park. Patrick. Thank you, Megan. I'm Patrick Bannon and we really? are indeed live here. Apologies for the technical difficulties there. But any moment now, Julia Salisbury will step out on stage behind me. Alex, Postman here. The boys in editing have just informed me that the eulogy footage isn't fully cut together yet. You're going to have to do it on the fly. For goodness sake, make sure you make it look good. Slowly gathering since this afternoon. This is Alan. You can undermine them here and help us win hearts and minds. Make him look bad, Alex. Really bad. And it seems like the ceremony okay, how do we make it? Here is Prime Minister Julia Salisbury, the picture of elegance to begin her address. Good evening, fellow teammates and friends. 500 days ago, all of our lives changed irrevocably. Oh, to do, do this Still one. reeling from the triumphs and tribulations of Liberation Night, another great loss befell the people of these newly united territories. The loss of a leader, a statesman, a dear friend, and a hero, Peter Gordon Clement. Peter's death at the age of just 62, of course, announced by the team on the 24th of December, just six weeks after Liberation Night. Ah, this one. Born to a working class family on a housing estate in Rothering, Peter first trained as a carpenter before getting his start on television. First moving and building scenery and then developing into the personality that we all knew and loved so much. Just the job first hit our screens over 25 years ago, running for 11 series, winning multiple awards and charming audiences up and down the country. Peter taught us, all of us, not to be content with the way things are not to accept inequities, no matter how small. But he also taught us what it took to fight them. Courage, integrity, empathy, and hard bloody graft. <laughs> Across a career spanning three decades, Peter Clement was known for shows including Wake Up, It's Saturday, and much later, late night chat show PT, which at its peak drew millions of viewers. Peter was by no means a saint. <laughs> Trust me, he once told me he had more regrets than he'd had stolen dinners. <laughs> he always did have a knack for a turn of phrase. But it speaks to the strength of his character that he chose to share with us his mistakes alongside his achievements, his faults as well as his talents. Peter had the heart to give it all, all he had for the people of these United Territories. Famous for his potty mouth, it's estimated conservatively that Peter Clement uttered over 1.5 million swear words during his career, though some sources put this figure well in excess of 2 million F-bombs alone. Gripped by illness as he was in the weeks and months leading up to Liberation Night, he wasn't the man we loved. But his eyes still twinkled with that familiar joy for life, that spark of wit and wisdom of a life lived for others. Prime Minister Clement, of course, died from apparent liver failure after suffering from the long-term effects of alcohol abuse. I first met Peter nearly 20 years ago, moments before I was supposed to give a speech. Nothing like this one, actually. <laughs> Only I'd, um, I'd spilt coffee all down myself. and I was young, nervous, desperate to be liked. And, and from behind me, I heard, Christ, pet, you've either pissed your kex or sprung a leak, but either way, you've got a problem. <laughs> and, and before
before I could even say a word, he stripped off his dry trousers and insisted I took them. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sort of man that Peter Clement was. Kind, compassionate, sensitive, a brilliant thinker, a natural leader, but mostly a good man. <laughs> this glorious, beautiful and new, this shining beacon of Thank you, Alex. There'll be another opportunity to steer public perception soon. It's really starting. You'll know when. His accomplishments. The okay, okay. The he forged there. The boundaries he pushed. To me, he'll always be the man in his pants cheering on a stranger at the back of the conference. It is my great honour to give to you the Peter Clement Memorial Garden. <laughs> oh, should we see if we can get a countdown going? Everyone with me? Ten, nine, eight, seven. <laughs> Control the message. I'm not leaving, I can't! What? You two, come with me! Don't panic! Help us here, look! We're gonna, we're gonna... We need a medic here! You're hurting me! Well, stop resisting then! Stop resisting and we'll let you up! I'm not resisting! Ah! Stop what are you, you doing? I'm not resisting! You'll stop! Huh? You're not resisting! I'm not resisting! Turn the camera off! It's National Night News, we have the right to be here! I said, turn the fucking camera off! What the fuck are you? Oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear anything. Yes, you can. Medics are coming. You sit down. I can't hear you. I'm from the National Nightly News. Well, then you can consider this payback. Salisbury's still here. Junior Salisbury! You were guilty of the murder of more than 10 million people! Justice demands a response! Haven't you done enough? Look Stop around it. you! Fucking this time. is what your precious freedom looks like, is it? Hold the fire! Everyone, rise up! Take to the streets, the time has come! Stop violence, break windows, draw them out! They can't stop us all! Resist! Destruct! Lower your weapons! Mom? I said, please turn that off. Shocking scenes from the capital. Is this not enough? You've just seen them execute unarmed civilians, people like you and me. So why are you watching this? Why are you not in the streets with us tonight? What will it take for you to get up and be a part of this? March on hmm. team How do I do it? Storm the building. Demand elections. Demand answers. Be what you're born to be. The once and future free. We'll be back after this. Oh, it's automate. I can do nothing. God, does anyone know if, if everyone's safe? Are the crew okay? All fine. The bomb is a good Thank you, Alex. From all of us, you're doing great. The event. No. It's different tonight. This is the big one. Great. So there's a revolution happening outside and we're off to dangy fuck. This one is second break. That's journalism apparently. No. A hey, was second break. Sequence. No, no, great C. It's not that good. Oh, wait. Such low prices. Like this. Box of packing peanuts. And or this bottle of Brad's urine. For our deceased colleague's gold teeth. I can't believe it's all on sale. Yes, indeed. This place is closing down and everything's gotta go. No, no, it's not closing down. We're relocating, relocating. <laughs> That's right, Brad. Really Alex. During this next section, a cameraman working in the newsroom, who's one of us, is going to get a coded location out. We don't know yet which camera he's on, 
but if we find out, I'll let you know. Just keep your eyes out for the fist, and try and keep it on the ear for at least five seconds. Our operatives will do the rest. Okay. Five seconds. Hello? Five, four, three. Welcome back to the National Nightly News with me, Megan Wolf. Very shortly, we'll be heading on over to the final episode of what has quickly become a hugely successful feature, the notice board. But before we do, let's chat with Philippa Radin. Tell me, why do you think the public love the notice board so much? It's real. <laughs> there, I said it. it. It connects with people. You know, people look at us and they say, those are real people struggling with real problems. That's a, that's a really interesting point. Yeah, I mean, I was saying to my PA secretary as I got out the limo, I was saying, it's good for people to see normal, authentic people like them on TV. Mmm, people like you. Yeah, precisely. Mm. Unfortunately, then I was interrupted by some dreadful wretch who wanted an autograph, but a swift kicking from security soon put him back in line. <laughs> Yes, well, I think it's really good that our screens are filled with such relatable stories. <laughs> so, the notice board is coming to an end after a sensational time at the top. What do you think has made this show so successful? Oh, it's a combination of so many things. Um, my hard work, mm. um, my talent, my look. Wow, we really have a lot to thank you for. Hey, hey, hey. You're welcome. Mm. <coughs> We've just heard so our man's on camera four. <coughs> I have a real sense of responsibility now. You know, a sense I've been entrusted with something... Get back to the interview, and Alex. I should use that platform for good. <laughs> I think that's really important, that we should use this platform to, to do good in the world. I agree. That's exactly it. So I've decided to help as many... <laughs> Excellent work, Alex. That's the location shared. Next, you'll need to give them a go. Is that um, better access to education or you know, reducing child poverty? Uh, no, by adopting as many as I can get my hands on. <laughs> oh, OK. Uh, how, many, how many children have you adopted? Oh, we're well into the double figures now, Megan. I stopped counting in the late 30s. Goodness, that is a lot of children. Yeah, once we finish putting them into the guest room, I'll have to put a futon in the laundry cupboard. Oh, you really are some sort of hero. Hey, I live a privileged life. What can I say? I mean, any child. I can take on is a child rescued from suffering. Poor children. Were their lives really that bad before? Oh, they're northerns, I presume so. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's shocking to think actually that only one in 10,000 children have a celebrity parent. Hmm. I'd never thought of it that way before. Well, I'm doing everything I can to fix those numbers. What do you think it is about your life that's so desirable then? It's mainly shame and panic interspersed with expensive bottled water, so uh, actually, if anyone wants to, I'd happily trade. <laughs> now that I can relate to. Right, <laughs> you better go off and get ready. That was Philippa Radin sharing some thoughts about her lifestyle. I think it's really important to stay grounded uh, and keep everything in perspective. Clearly, not everyone else agrees, but that's enough for me. Let's go now over to Dangly Parts for the final ever episode of The Notice Board. Okay, I don't know, don't know how this one works, I don't remember. What a day! First the tea morning, and now to post this notice. I don't know how I managed to cope with it all. Oh wait, perhaps I do. Oh, happiness was the first. By St. Barnabas, what on earth is all this? Freeze, dirtbag! Oh, Laura, it's you. I thought for a moment you were a knife-wielding mugger or stabber. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. It's just me, a community cohesion officer, responsible for keeping crime at record lows. Of course. Keep forgetting that thanks to you and your colleagues, violence on our streets is a thing of the past. What's all this, vicar? I know! It's a disgrace. 
It's time for the go code. Give us three boos in a row, Alex. That will start the pincer movement. We might just pull this off. Push forwards! Three boos, Alex. Careful, Vicar. It looks heavy. Ha! They don't call me the right reverend. Ripped for no reason. You missed it. What? What? It's no good. It looks like all those crucifix classes were a waste of time. Perhaps you, a young CCO, would be able to use it. Yes! Oh, okay. Looks like all those lifting classes were a waste of time. It's too heavy, even for me. A strong and capable... Let's hope that's enough. Surely At least you tried, Alex. ...strong enough to lift this... I didn't know which one. one call for the best firefighter in town? hi Well done, Captain Evans. You're so much stronger than us. Especially me, the weak old man. It's the least I could do for my community. No luck catching the little devil then? Unfortunately not. The ferret struck again last night. When Ray opened the post office this morning, he found that every single stamp had been pre-licked. My God! Some people have no decency. Sadly, if we don't catch him before tomorrow, we may have to cancel the village fate. Don't worry. We won't let that happen. Will we, Vicar? No, no, no. Laura, tell me, why do they call him the ferret? Some say it's because of his sneaky nature. But really, it's because whenever he strikes, he always leaves behind the foul stench of urine. Never fear, officer. We'll catch this pissy nuisance and save the village fate. Or my name's not Captain Danger Evans. The community cohesion team are doing their best. But they simply don't have the smarts to solve this mystery. But I know someone who does. Someone who's about to blow this thing wide open. <laughs> Me! Blackout! Ah, uh, it's the morning of the village fate. Thanks to theatrical convention. I sure hope everything goes to plan. Oh, look! There's Mrs. Craven setting up her cake stall. And look, there's the motorcycle display team setting up for a show that would be far too expensive for live television. I'm going to set up the coconut shy. What are you doing, Vicar? First, I'm running the tombola. Then, I'll be selling forgiveness for money. Aren't you judging the jam? I couldn't possibly. Ah! Well, that sounded like Mrs. Craven. <gasps> Looks like someone sucked all the jam out of her donuts. That damn ferret has struck again. Whatever are we to do? Although I'm very competent, I have no idea how to solve this case. I guess we'll just have to cancel the fate. Hold it right there, ferret. <gasps> Have you been drinking from the fire extinguishers again? Not you! The vicar! Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Admit it! You wanted the village fate cancelled so you could have the day off, didn't you? I already have to work Sundays! I shouldn't have to work two days a week! <gasps> but how did you know? Well, my first clue was the smell. Yes, I do smell of urine. Next! I noticed that the vicar's tongue was particularly dry, almost as if he'd been licking thousands and thousands of stamps. Or perhaps eating Mrs. Craven's baking. <laughs> 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 Which brings me on to my third clue. The vicar said that he had no more room for jam. 
almost as if he'd had his fill. Precisely. But you managed to figure it all out from that? Well, I also uh, found this at the scene. <laughs> that proves nothing. No! Get him out of here, officer! You did it, Captain. You could say you ferreted him out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Let's go and have a party in my massive garden. I am doing well. Thanks to you, we're all doing well. well that was it. The final ever episode of The Notice Board. And what a way to end it. Thank you, as always, to Jeff, Philippa and Tommy. After the break, we'll be both dancing and learning. So don't change that channel. We'll be right back. That's the ads. Well done, everybody. Wow! <laughs> what a brilliant run, eh? After party at my... What advert is this, Alex? I don't remember passing it for broadcast. I think you made a mistake there. Uh, I've got four kinds of sausage. Hey, you, you. You coming to the after party? One last push, Alex. We're closing in. One of the guests in the last section is working with us. You'll be asked to censor on our behalf. If you do it right, the final orders will be given. We'll get three chances. Get at least two of them right, and we're going to win this thing. It's happening, Alex. Tonight we take it back. Ooh, hey, plus. Over the years, my jealousy grew. So when Advance came to power, I didn't think about the damage they would do. I... I acted selfishly. I was glad to see the rich punished. I didn't see how backwards Advance were. I didn't understand that rather than tearing down the wealth creators, we should have been helping everyone else to take a seat at their table. Under Advance, the country is poorer. It is poorer in ambition. It is poorer in aspiration. We are infantilized by Advance's naive policies. Policies Please, born from anything. Hey, Mom, I'm really not supposed to absurd, say. safe, redistributive Hi, fantasies. Uh, Jim just said to ask if you need any touch up. I have hawed myself out to the media to defend the indefensible. That's my shade, is it? Wait, yeah. I this have betrayed is my, my shade. parents. I see that now. Mum. Dad. I'm, I'm sorry. Jenny now. Our only hope. Sorry about that, Sarah. The Nothing only hope. That's all. Like at all. They've said now lies. Diet, that's all I can say. With Ten disrupt. seconds. What's wrong with you? She is in tears. Ugh. Going in five, four, three. Interesting. Welcome back to the National Nightly News. Later in this segment, we're hoping to be able to go back to Patrick Bannon at the scene of tonight's shocking disrupt attack. But first, I'm delighted to be joined by the cast of the smash hit musical everyone is talking about. I'll be speaking with the cast in a moment, but first, let's take a look at them in action. Please give a warm National Nightly welcome to the Novaries. The Novaries. Hello? Doctor? Yes, I see. Thank you for letting me know. A decent life I'm a happy loving wife and my job is well paid and fulfilling I have a husband John he's due home soon won't be long and I have to tell him something that is absolutely chilling we share coffee in the morning and we make love every day we take time alone together to talk home. Oh, darling John. Oh, dearest John. There's something very wrong. I've just had a conversation with our Dr. David Wong, so please be seated. This news will make you feel defeated. The scans revealed a lump. You, you poor, poor unlucky chump. Is it cancer? Worse, oh, John. We're having a baby. How can 
this be? Oh, woe oh, is me. Why has this happened to me? I always wear two condoms for the maximum of safety. safety. In our tiny flat, we built a peaceful habitat. Now our lives are fucked. We're having, having a, a baby. baby. Now you can't have any wine at book club. And there won't be any time for foot rubs. Now your hair will stink of weed. And you'll start to disagree. And forget about that holiday in Territory 3. No more waking up at half past ten. In fact, you're never going to get a good night's sleep again. No more snap decisions to go on to a club. You'll be lucky if you even make it out to the pub. It comes from personal bums. Now when I take a sick day at home, the parasite won't leave you alone. How is We're our top priority. I look after you, and you look after me. Ain't no trouble and strife, we got a childless life. Amazing. The Novaries there, treating us to their opening number from Elegy for a Childless Life, which is currently the hottest ticket in the Capital Theatre District, and we'll be touring the territories later this year. Right then, come on you got. come on down, let's go, don't be shy. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hi Megan. Hi. It's an honour to be here. Oh really, are you fans of the show? Yeah, there's used to be. <laughs> well, listen, let's get stuck in. You're an amazing musical. Now, I mean, not only do you perform this show every single night. With matinees on Wednesday and Saturday. <laughs> right, but you're also the show's creators, am I right? Well, everyone contributed their ideas, and then some of us went away and did the actual work on the script. <laughs> um, but no, it's, it's very much a team effort. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> How rude of me, I've not introduced any of you. <laughs> I'll be the one being replaced next. Let's go down the line, shall we? Hi, I'm Jack. <laughs> Jim Blunt. Pleasure to be here. Jennifer Boreham Woodley. Hello, I'm John. John Sapley. Used to be in the business professionally. My name's Jill with a J. <laughs> and I'm Janet. I'm the youngest. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> and you were all friends previously. I mean, what a, what a coincidence, right? <laughs> 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 uh, with, with, your, with your names begin, beginning with a J. Oh my goodness, guys. Our names all begin with J. Yeah. How have we never noticed that? <laughs> because you haven't typed them out a thousand times? <laughs> you knew? Why didn't you say anything? I thought we all knew. 
bloody obvious, isn't it? I just thought we were doing a funny thing where we never mentioned it. <laughs> and I believe as well as being friends, you're also couples in real life as well as in the show. Well, <laughs> oh, well. not exactly. No. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> I'm with Janet. And I'm with John, you lucky bean. <laughs> Jim and I are married. Four fabulous years. <laughs> well, that must make for some confusion in the rehearsal room. Oh, you should have seen the first draft. Jen decided that Jack would play Jim, I would play Jack. Jen, Janet, Jill, Jen, Janet, Jill. What about John? Well, my character was originally just called Man One. It was allegorical. It was what? very confusing. Not for a professional. <laughs> After much doing and throwing. And uh, gnashing and wailing. <laughs> And gin and tonic. <laughs> <laughs> we decided that we'd just use our own names, which um, is less truthful. Oh. We're also less likely to go into the wrong dressing rooms. Oh, God, yeah, that would be very embarrassing, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, of course, when I first wrote it, we were only meant to run for a few nights at the Nimble Village Hall, but when I registered it with the Department for Culture, mm. it caught the eye of someone high up, and before you could say overnight sensation, we were transferring to the capital! <laughs> it's all been a bit of a roller coaster, really. Yeah. I'm only 19. I'm the youngest. You really don't have to repeat that. <laughs> I had to give up my job as a mortuary technician. Well, yes, we all had to move to the capital. <laughs> I love that job. It's been a very turbulent time. So peaceful, no singing. <laughs> this piece isn't. Peaceful. Stand by, Alex. Censor the orange. About children. Okay. Mm -hmm. And why you shouldn't have them. <laughs> In a way, I guess it is political, with a small p. After all, we are a solid unit, and eagle-eyed audience members will see we nod our heads to advance on stage throughout, and we target the messaging at women aged 22, well, about 35, as they're the most likely to be afflicted by this terrible problem. Terrible problem. Having children. You understand, Megan. You clearly agree. Wow, this isn't about me. <laughs> of course, we see that there are advantages to a family unit, but eagle-eyed couples watch as the little parasites advance on their lives. And there's no time to play the guitar, get through a book, or watch a movie. They're exhausted, passed out on the couch by 20 to 9, for God's sake. You're very chatty tonight, dear. Usually I'm the chatty one, because you're the youngest, we know. It's not a badge of honour, Janet. <laughs> Janet, please, Jennifer. Oh, well said, John. Thanks, Janet. Got you back. So, could, um, could you just tell us uh, what is the play about? Mm. What happens in yes. it? Yes, well, go ahead. It's a tragedy, obviously. <laughs> um, Jennifer, myself, and John have their child, and then the story charts the downfall of their hopes and dreams. So. And there's lots of singing. And dancing. A lot. My character works at a menu centre for a distribution unit. Eagle-eyed, she sees her friend's rapid advance to a pit of despair. Becoming a target for children's TV advertising at the age of 22, she decides to take drastic action. I can't really say more, though. Probably said too much. Already. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not spoil the second act for anyone who might come to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Which should be all of you. <laughs> for too long, we've been told that a life without children is somehow incomplete. That that children are a, are a blessing. Well, I've done the research, and they're not. <laughs> Besides, there's already loads of bastards running around all over the place. So. Exactly. We just want people to have the option of a happy, child-free life without mm. stigma. <laughs> you know, when I was 14, before I had come out, <laughs> I had an experience with a girl called Julia Jacobs. She was an experiment, I guess, you know, a chance to dip my toes into the air. Well, thank you all so much for coming in tonight. I really hope you keep them dancing in the aisles for many performances to come. Mm. The Nova is there. And I am pleased to say we can now go back to Patrick Bannon to get the latest from the scene of tonight's horrific events. Patrick, are you okay? Thank you, Megan. This is Patrick Bannon reporting from the scene of tonight's devastating and symbolic attack tonight this evening. An attack which I myself have been found myself caught up in. I I'm still a little dazed and a little deaf, Megan. So I hope you'll forgive me if I seem that it's time to speak with the Prime Minister. Mrs Salisbury, that's you. You're still here. The Prime Minister. I couldn't leave, not, not when there were people that needed help. Any team player would have done the same. I don't deserve praise for being human. Yes, no accolades here. 
Or palisades. Or lemonade. Right. So, is the situation now? Are we safe? Uh, yes. Um, the security services perform their duties without hesitation. And I would like to assure the public that although there have been some injuries, there were no civilian deaths here this evening. Well, that's good news about the civi... Sorry, did you... Did you say no deaths? That's right. No civilian deaths. Just the four disrupt terrorists curtailed by law enforcement who were, as always, so cohesive. If I may, I have a message for your viewers. Of course. The camera... There's the ca Speak there, on, on the camera there. Stay at home tonight. Do not become another casualty of war. Disrupt have had their moment. Ooh, but, smoke. as the dear departed Peter Clements once famously said, it ends today. <coughs> Thank you, Prime Minister, for those strong words of strength. Back to the studio. Megan now in the studio with Megan Wolf now. Patrick Bannon there, bravely Ooh. reporting from the front line of tonight's horrifying bombing. Maybe you need to get checked out, Patrick. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's National Nightly News. But before we go, news, but victory is in sight, my friends. You have mobilized. You have come together. From our agents at the television networks risking arrest and getting those words to you, to the many hundreds and thousands gathering to invade team headquarters. As I speak, we are turning the tide. And it is time for change. Tonight, we topple their regime, and we also silence their mouthpiece. Channel One. Time to wake up. Also, we have to leave. The military have been actioned, and well, it's pretty scary out there tonight. So stay at home and stay with Channel One, because the team has assured this program that the turbulence will soon be uh -oh. over, and we can once again in the future with a quality. My name is Nathan. Let's make tomorrow better. Done it, Alex. Tonight is the beginning of the fall of the France. France jet at 11 o'clock. Charges reached, sir. Mission to detonate. Permission granted, old friend. We are going to detonate. Look out your window, Alex. See what you help make happen. She's coming down. I survived. First to see, yeah. Hey, nice. Small bonus current wealth. <laughs> Can afford cotton. <laughs> Illuminati, yes, it's going up. Share PC current. Oh, resistance is going up. Channel 1 loves me, this one goes down. Rushes, 